I'm a surgeon in South Dakota, and we have patients that come from at least five and six hour drive to come to our institution to be treated for their breast cancer. So we are really very interested in doing everything as quickly as we can and to be very efficient with their time. There's my disclaimer. A Vera Cancer Institute, our experience with CSM, we've been doing CSM since 2014. And uh, we've been told that we now have the most experience with CSM in the world because of our large numbers that we do on a regular basis. When we first started in 2014, I, I ordered the first one. Uh, and we were doing 50 a month that first year, and now we're up to 110 a month. Uh, so 110 studies are done every month on our patients. We have a total of 3,900. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a good thing I have these things. I earned, I earned these. This is what happens when you get older. So I always tell my patients, and, and, and I'm doing this to say, you know, this is how you want to incorporate this into your, into your practice and how you really want to make sure your patients understand what you're doing and explain it in a way that they, that they will be able to understand. MRI is still considered the standard of care, but CSM has been found to show correctly identify breast cancers as well as MRI. It's similar to MRI and can be done serially for surveillance, which we do. There are a few false positives, and certainly I see that in my practice. I have not been a big fan of MRI because of those false positives that we were struggling with, especially when we first started doing them. They're easier for the radiologist to read, and we get that result right away. I tell my patients they can't have anything by mouth for four hours prior to the procedure, and if we have a history of asthma or iodine injections, we do premedicate with Benadryl and steroids. I also tell them that the, the cost of the study is similar to a diagnostic mammogram, and we'll go over that in a little bit. It's similar in the amount of radiation exposure to a diagnostic mammogram. The sh there's a shorter time step for the study compared to an MRI. It's a 15 minute compared to a 40 minute or up to an hour MRI. It's more comfortable, we talked about that, except you may have that urge to urinate. When they give you the injection, you have that warm feeling in your groin. Um, Patients will get the results immediately, and certainly in my practice, I see that because I always see my patients after they have their imaging that day. So then after they, they come across the hall and they come and see me, we talk about it. This is a mammogram with an IV. I, 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 that really helps them to understand, oh, okay, it's very similar to a mammogram. What I tell them is that the contrast is absorbed by breast tissue that is more active, and that breast cancer is much more active, and we're talking about the blood supply. When the, hot, when the contrast is given, that contrast is attracted or goes right to where the blood supply is greater, and you're going to have a hot spot on your CSM. But I also warn them that there are some, some benign things that can happen in the breast that can light up, and not to panic if we find them. We may, not, we need, may need to do a biopsy, but we'll have to wait and see what that result is. So the contraindications are patients with iodine contrast and allergies, and we do premedicate them. Renal disease, we always do a, um, why did it just go? GFR before, before we give this. And certainly when, in my patients in their 70s and 80s, I want to make sure that their GFR is working properly. And um, when they're healthy, that's really not an issue. And then for implants, we are a little bit, we're working with them, but we, we tend to stay away from that. So for indications, I use it for new diagnosis of breast cancer, for neoadjuvant chemotherapy, both the, in the um, endocrine as well as the adjuvant chemo, palpable breast mass, dense breast tissue on mammogram with nodularity on a physical exam, and I also use it for surveillance after breast conservation surgery. So for our breast cancer diagnoses, here's an example. We have a 52-year-old woman with a strong family history. She had a negative mammogram, but 10 months later, she shows up with a palpable mass. And you can certainly see on her mammograms, she's got very dense breasts. Can you see the cancer, anyone? <laughs> so she was recommended. She had a, a diagnostic a mammogram, and you can see the radiologist went crazy, and they said, okay, we're worried about this, we're worried about that. There's lots going on in this. She was recommended for an ultrasound, and there's her ultrasound. So now we see that there is definitely something that needs to be evaluated. Well, in our center, she was referred, and we and the radiologist recommended that she have a CESM. So this is what her contrast looked like. So her left breast, oops, the left breast with the known cancer is right there, but we also found another cancer on the right 
Both of them were biopsied, and both of them were grade three invasive ductal carcinomas. So for our neoadjuvant example, we have a patient who once again has very dense breasts. Can you see the breast cancer? Uh, she is a 50-year-old female with no personal history of cancer, family history of breast cancer, and maternal aunt at age 39. In 2014, she presented with a right palpable breast mass and a right axillary mass. Her diagnostic mammogram was performed. Those are her diagnostics. And again, I struggled to see. You can see her little marker showing where her mass is or where her palpable lump is, but I can't even pick that out. She had biopsies recommended in both areas, and she was found to have an invasive ductal carcinoma, and then her lymph node was also found to be positive for metastatic adenocarcinoma. So we did contrast enhanced on her, and what I want you to look at is this is really, this is my control. This is the left breast. This is her contrast on the left. This is her contrast on the right. Her whole breast is full of breast cancer. And this is her normal left. This is her left with the cancer. You really can't tell the difference, but the contrast really helped show that that breast is entirely taken over by this breast cancer. But after her neoadjuvant chemotherapy, look what happened to the right breast. This is her right breast prior. This is the contrast study. This is not her regular mammogram. This is the contrast. This is after her neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So a remarkable improvement. And we really see that this is, this is done very well. For diagnostic challenges in my patients, here's a 52-year-old woman who's an MD. So that's always challenging, right? <laughs> she has a mother who developed breast cancer at the age of 70. So she has a, some history, not terribly um, challenging, but she has no known mutation. She's already had herself tested. A real issue with her is at 52, she has terrible problems with her hormones. And she finds that when she's not taking hormone replacement, she can't think. She really struggles. And, and so at 52, she says, I have to take hormone replacement. And, and she notices there's a huge difference in how she, how she functions in the office. So she comes, and these are her mammograms. And I, she came to me after she'd had some imaging, and they found some areas that were abnormal. And she went back for ultrasounds of both breasts, mag views of both. And then they found out six months later that they hadn't magged everything that they found. And so now she's, she's having issues with her radiologist and trust. And so she came to me, and what should I do? And so I thought, OK, I have a woman here who isn't going to stop taking hormones. So her breasts aren't going to get less dense. They're going to stay their density. And I have to work with that. Um, but I really don't know how we're ever going to get a good look at these breasts with these mammograms. So I offered her contrast enhanced. And that's what she looked like. And she's very happy. And so, so this really helped a lot to just just get rid of everything and, and clear the field and make sure that we're on the right track. And we can start to monitor her now. So my management plan for, plan for her is that I will see her yearly and do a physical exam. We will do yearly screening digital mammograms. I'll evaluate and discuss her need for hormonal replacement <laughs> every year. Um, if she has any abnormalities next year, I'm going to go ahead and get another contrast enhanced. If it's normal, I'll probably wait till the following year. Maybe get one every two years, every three years. But we'll always have that discussion. But my contrast is going to be my backup should we find any abnormalities in her next mammogram. Here's another patient, a 63-year-old woman I've taken care of since 2006 when she was diagnosed with a left invasive ductal carcinoma. She had adjuvant whole breast radiation therapy after a lumpectomy, and then she declined endocrine therapy. In 2012, she came back with another abnormality in the left breast, and we found LCIS on a core. We did not treat that uh, with, with any surgery. Um, in 2014, she had left breast, uh, um, um, a breast mass with thickening. So I, you know, I, I felt it, and I thought, I'm not that worried about it. I think it's post-radiation changes, but it's a little bit late to start having post-radiation changes. So we ordered um, a mammogram. And she has this really dense area. This is, you can see, this is where she's had some um, surgical defect and from the radiation. So she's pulled in on that side. Ultrasound was really challenging because we see that this is the surgical site, and it looks very suspicious that something's going on. 
but her contrast was done, and it really helped to figure this all out. So for her contrast study, this area, this is on her right, this is her left, but we did an MLO, so nothing lit up. And we had to do a little bit of uh, extra views just so that we could get into that area. And again, we're not finding anything in this area where that we're, they were so worried. So my management plan for her is that we're going to do yearly physical exams. She's in my high-risk clinic. She's, she keeps doing crazy things, so I have to keep an eye on her. Um, we'll do yearly mammograms, and we'll do screening because she's passed her five years of uh, breast cancer treatment. I will do a CSM um, for any screening or clinical abnormalities now, and then we'll get another one in two to three years just to make sure that we're not, we're not missing anything. So when I use my CSM, I use them for patients with advanced age or mobility issues, just like you do. I use them at, for women who are at risk who refuse an MRI. And in my institution, well, in, in, I'm sure we all have patients where getting an MRI, even though you have insurance, can have some real financial burdens. Because there are a lot of insurance companies that only pay for an MRI after you've met your deductible. So if you haven't met your deductible that year, you're going to have to pay out of pocket. And so for some women, that's a huge burden, especially when they're getting one every year. So I partner with my patients. If this is a burden for them and financials are, are a, real, a real problem, we'll talk about should we do a contrast in, enhanced instead of an MRI. Should we get an MRI on the year that you've met your deductible and now we can have it paid for? But do the contrast instead of this year, maybe do an MRI next year. Women with dense breasts and challenging exams with no other risk factors, and I get plenty of those women in my office where their OBGNs throw up their hands and say, you better go to the breast surgeon, she knows what she's feeling. <laughs> I wish I did. Uh, so contrast enhancement really helps on those. Um, nodularity on exam that is not seen on a mammogram or ultrasound. Patients with breast conservation who require yearly advanced imaging post-treatment. And we certainly talk about that at our multidisciplinary conference. If we have women who we really struggled to see prior to surgery, we know we're going to have to follow them in a different way. Mammograms don't really help us. So contrast enhanced or MRI are both the, the things that we do for advanced imaging. So patients with breast conservation and abnormality on surveillance. I don't do mag views anymore on these women. I just go immediately to CESM because they feel better about it. Then we can look at the images. I look at them with the patient, and when they see that everything's all gray and they don't have anything that lights up, they're very relieved by that. And, and the visual for them to be able to really see what that looks like is very, very helpful. And then we also use it to evaluate the effects of chemotherapy. So in conclusion, I think the immediate results definitely decrease anxiety. I see that every day in my office. They can be cost effective for patients in surveillance, and that needs to be addressed with our patients. And they're an excellent tool for the breast surgeon's toolbox for our workup, for evaluation, treatment, and for surveillance. Thanks for your attention.